Hey everybody, how's it going? We're playing some Valheim. Sadly today, I'm alone. None of my friends are on with me, so it's just gonna be me and you. And also, I do wanna say that I am voicing over my gameplay. I decided just to take a little break and just play the game and have some fun. So, uh, we're just gonna be talking over what I'm doing. But today <clears throat> is a very important episode. A lot of the things that we've been doing Basically, the past 5-10 videos have been leading up to today, which is making the magic staffs. So, as you can see in the gameplay that you see now, I am going and hunting down more of the extractors. So I can stick those in the roots, so I can get more sap. Turn that sap and flesh into the green balls, and those green balls is what I need for those staffs. So that's currently what I'm doing. Yeah, so... Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a lot of that today. It's also gonna be interesting. I just got the frost staff, so we kind of get our first chance to try to give it a whirl in actual combat. So there's a seeker over here. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with it. Uh, ah, see, here's the thing. I don't have a lot of good mage food, so my eater is very low, so this might take a minute. But... Uh, the soldier, I've been here for probably like 20 minutes, let's go ahead and kill the soldier, there we go, and because the Seeker has already killed all the Divergers in this area, it's kind of a free extractor, which, you know, I can always appreciate, so let's go ahead and break that, we should also, a lot of people forget, but you want to make sure to break the boxes too, because they contain more flesh. That's also pretty important. Uh, but after that, we'll go ahead and uh, jump back on the boat, and we'll head back and maybe start making some of the weapons. But yeah, like I said, make sure to break the crates, as you never know when there's going to be a little bit of that soft tissue. Did I have, been, have I been saying flesh? I've been meaning soft tissue. Yeah, you always want to break those, grab all the soft tissue. That stuff is pretty valuable. So you're going to want to make sure that you're holding on to most of that. So yeah, let's go ahead and clean up the boat storage system a little bit. Put things in the right place. And then we can kind of head back and start doing some of the cool stuff, like getting the new weapons. Before we do that, though, there is one important thing, like I said. So we've been hunting down these extractors, but... You know, the extractors don't give me the actual sap itself. We need to create uh, whatever the thingy is called. So, what I did, if you guys remember, we have a little makeshift base in the middle of the Mistlands. I'm going to try and hunt down three different routes where I can place extractors. To place extractors, you do need a workbench put down. So, that's what I'm doing here. I went ahead and put the workbench right here. We got lucky. And there's actually a root right in front of the makeshift base. So this is going to be by far the easiest one to grab. So it should be pretty easy. I also made an extra chest here just for storage because there seems to be, you know, a lot of things I'm holding on to. So what's this thing called again? I totally forgot. Okay, so it's just a sap extractor. So we can stick it in any part over here. We can just put it right around this area. And like I said, this one's the probably the easiest, nicest one. It's literally in front of our base. But I believe there are a few more locations around us. So we're going to go ahead and try to hunt those down. And of course, I want to try to be a good player, but also like a good team member here. Let's go ahead and try to mark them all on the map when we do them. So when our buddy gets on, he can know where they are too. All right. So I know it's kind of like a weird jump cut, but we are here at the second location. It's... It was basically like a 30 second walk south of where I was just at. There's another route right here. We're going to go ahead and finish up the same thing. We're going to finish up the bench and we'll go ahead and place down the extractor. What's really nice with the route that you'll see in a minute here, it does actually make a circle. So we could come here, we could run out of our base, we can collect one, two, three in a circle, and we'll be back at our base. It's super nice. I don't have to go super far away and head back and kind of like waste time. It's a it's pretty efficient the way that I set it up. So you can see there's the Diverger Hut is where we live. There's an extractor right above it. This is the other extractor and you can simply walk here because there is a path. You don't have to go jump over any hills or anything like that. 
So we have one there. We have the other extractor right there. And now we're going to go, uh, if we're looking at like the video, never eat sour watermelon. We're going to go a little bit west of here. And that's where, gonna, that's where the other extractor is going to be. And that'll create a nice little circle for us. All right, sap extractor. Bam, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which we will have to build another workbench. But yeah, okay. So this is the third one. Like I said, it's just a little bit west. We got to build another, another workbench on here somewhere. The only thing I don't like about this specific location is there seems to be a lot of enemies in this area. Just slightly annoying. I've already, I remember when I was recording this, I had to fight a few soldiers here, which was pretty frustrating, but once we get it down, it'll be no problem. We'll just run here, grab sap, and leave. There also is a diverger homie, like, two seconds from me, which is also nice. Although, once he dies, it's kind of GG, but... Okay, as you can see, that is the other sap extractor. Now, I think in the video, I ended up running out of a material, so I had to quickly run back, I think grab the materials that I was missing, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna go ahead and cut away from that, and ah uh, yeah, so this is what I was talking about, of me getting attacked here. For some reason, speakers and soldiers love sitting, ow, that hurt. They love sitting around this area, and I did want to show you guys that I do face adversity here and then. <laughs> the game is actually hard, I know I, to be honest, I kind of, I don't want to say like I spoil you guys, but I probably cut out like 60 to 70% of all of my gameplay just because most of it is me dying, spending an hour coming back, or me fighting one enemy for like over 15 minutes. I kind of spoil you guys. I take out most of the fights, but I like to leave a couple in here just to show you guys that uh, I do actually have to fight things. This game is actually pretty difficult here and there. I think the most difficult part is just managing your inventory space. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up this table. We can put down the last app extractor. And then we have official, officially we have four. We have one near the planes and we have three in this little circle circuit over here, which is nice. So we'll be getting a lot of sap going and this will help us create all the armor and staffs. Now you guys might be thinking, well, you only need like a hundred to make all the staffs and stuff, right? Well, yes, but you guys can't forget that I do also have to upgrade everything, and that costs another couple hundred. And you gotta remember, I have a buddy that also needs his armor, and he also needs upgrades, so really, we might, we're gonna have to run through like three, four hundred of this stuff, so. These extractors, they each make ten, we have four, so essentially each cycle we're making forty, and we need a total of like, let's just estimate four hundred. So I'm going to have to make 10 plus trips just to actually satisfy what we need. And that's just what we need. Of course, if we want to have fun, make other stuff, it's going to cost even more. So it's very important that we got those set up. I'm glad I did. Like I said, I, I would have set it up with my buddy, but I kind of, I was just playing. I might as well just get it done, you know, start farming while I can. I think in this section here, I'm just kind of cleaning up everything with so many new items coming in at once chests can get really messy so i did a little bit of cleanup i did make like a corner over there specifically just for these things now let's see so let's go ahead and fix our items we have to stick the sap and stuff in the machine and then we'll end up getting the staffs rolling which is really really cool all right let's see what we got all right so we're back here i think this is where oh no i remember this part because this is like Okay, let me, do you know what's one of the coolest things in this game that I thoroughly enjoy is the fact that a lot of the mobs do fight each other. So, especially when you have like a planes and a mistlands right next to each other, you tend to have loxes uh, and the seekers and the little goblin homies fighting each other. And it is the funniest thing ever. So I, this is why I'm including this in this video because I love it. One of my favorite clips of all time as far as this game, it was very early on, but um, I think I, it was in the mountain. I brought over a troll, there was wolves, there was mosquitoes, I think there was a drake. There was just every type of 
like monster imaginable just fighting each other and i think it was probably the greatest thing i've ever done even more valuable than my actual like pharmacy career it, it was definitely that fight and one thing i did learn from here is that loxes are absolutely nasty and op you can actually bring like seven seekers and a lox will probably survive it thank god they're slow because if they were fast yeah this game would be impossible to play so it's kind of useful but I think the original reason I came here was actually just for the sap, and then I had a little side quest in the meanwhile, but I did come for the sap, and this is the first sap that, or the first route that we used, so the reason I'm building a, uh, a work uh, bench here is because I had to take the extractor from another route and basically move it over here to a new route, because we used it so much, I do need a little bit more wood, and luckily there's a little bit lying around it seems see i'm also just moving the root yeah you can see like literally in the background right there i think that was the one that was empty so i'm just moving it making sure the sap still flows there we go bing bong and i think we're very close to actually start making the stuff yeah i think here we go so look look at all the eater that we got I even got the blood clots and the skulls and the the cubes and the bones. So we can finally, let's go ahead and start off with the Staff of Protection. It's always good to have a weapon along with the protection. We could also make the Staff of Embers. What do we need for the Dead Razor? Okay, so we just need a little bit more Eater. But I think, do I have some more? I literally need like four more. Well, four more is not very hard to get. I can go and grab a couple of, a couple more here. Put an organizer inventory. So there we go. We got the protection and we got the fire. And now we got the freeze. So we just have the the dead razor, which again is not too hard. Let me just hey, there we go. Look at me. Coming right over here, grabbing a couple more refined eater. Let's go ahead and make the skull one. And we'll officially have all the staffs in the game. S so, the game's not done, obviously, so I can't claim these to be, like, the best weapons in the game, but, I mean, they're pretty dang good. Especially if you get the right food, I think they might be the best thing in the game. Again, if you have food. If you don't have food, they're almost useless, which is kind of sad, but they're absolutely broken. So, now we're going to go ahead and, not this episode, but we'll, we'll have the ability to go back to old dungeons. We're going to go back to old bosses. And basically try to beat him again with this is I guess spoiler this is end game or current and the, when you see this video there might be another update out which I actually kind of assume there might be uh, but this is current end game stuff as you can see here I need food like I just said and one the one of the best mage foods is turnips. So I went ahead, I think we had a few turnips lying around on a chest, so I grabbed my, uh, I forgot what this tool is called, it's like the hoe, but it's not, it's not the hoe, because I think there's a hoe, this is the, not the fermenter, bro, I don't know what this is, you know, inoculator, something like that? Yeah, okay, don't quote me, but, yeah, so we have to start planting some turnips, because they will be very useful for food. Okay, what am I doing here? So it seems like I'm having a little bit of inventory trouble. What am I trying to do? I think I'm trying to upgrade, right? I think I'm looking for some upgrades because I think we do have... Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So there's the rune table. I built the rune table, which now does get me the ability to go to level 2, which is basically upgrading. But I think we need some more materials for that actual upgrading. What I'm doing here, uh, like I said, we've kind of been talking about food for a little while now. This is, I think, the last attachment to the cooking station that, you know, that gives me more food. And you can see there that por that porridge, and there was also that stuffed mushroom cap. Those are the two foods that we're going to be needing. The thing that sucks is, unlike a lot of the melee proteins where you just kill and cook, man, some of these are going to require some hard materials, including seeker meat. More importantly, the royal jelly and these mage caps those are going to be some of the main ingredients now the mage caps you can farm those aren't a problem the seekers they're very abundant so those aren't really a problem the only thing that really sucks is getting that royal jelly as you can see here this uh seeker aspic which is basically 
apparently a quivering jelly that tastes like gentle electricity. It's secret meat, the mage caps, and the royal jelly. And I think... Okay, so then the, the portridge is the same thing, but it requires barley and sap. Now, everything here, again, can be farmed. Wait, other than I think the royal jelly? The barley is very easy to do. The sap is less easy to do because, you know, you only get ten every time. You're using four for one. Uh, but... The main food, and the easiest food, I think, to make is actually the one that we haven't made yet, which involves the turnips, because in this clip I'm actually still growing the turnips, but late game mage build uses these three things, the, the seeker soup, or the seeker gelatin, that porridge, and we're going to be using the, mu the stuffed uh, mage caps, mushroom caps, turnip, whatever. Those are going to be, if we eat those three, dude, our eater is going to be out of this world. Uh, that's so that that's kind of the plan for endgame and then once we get everything upgraded to level two and three and have those foods we will essentially be ready to take on the final boss of the game realistically i could probably even take on the final boss of the game right now but you know i want to do it correctly me and uh me and my buddy will try to max out everything that we currently have so we can Basically, go fight the boss, kind of complete the game. There's a few little minor side bosses that I'm going to probably do on my own later. Uh, but we want to get everything maxed, go fight the boss. And then, essentially, it'll be a waiting game for the next update, which is going to be the Ashlands. And like I said, by the time you see this video, there is a decent chance the Ashlands might actually already be out. As far as what I'm doing on video, I'm just creating some more storage. So these are some personal storage chests for me, Adam, and Michael here that are only basically the only ones I play on the server right now. But uh, yeah, like I said, we're this is we're kind of at the end here soon. We still again we still got the boss, we still got upgrades, but we're gonna do all that, fight the boss, and then it's gonna be the Ashlands. Which, like I said, uh, when I'm when I recorded the gameplay and when I'm recording my voice, it is still not out, but I expect it to come out very soon. And it might take a little while for me to get this video out, considering this is episode 30. So just so you guys know, if it sounds weird, like, why is this guy talking about the new update? Because by the, when I'm recording this, it hasn't even come out. So here we go. This is uh, the personal chest that I have. I'm just sticking basically all of my melee armor and my tools here. So I'm going to leave my melee armor in case I ever want to just like quick swap to melee. And of course, I don't need all of my tools on me at all times. Yeah, we're going to keep the essentials on us, and thanks for watching.